of 2020. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Sarajaki, will you please pull the roll? Mrs. Bauer? Here. Mrs. Boroff? Here. Mrs. Brody? Here. Mrs. Mitchell? Here. Mrs. Suriani? Here. Mrs. Williams? Here. Mrs. Winkler? Here. Dr. Kulikowski? Here. Quorum is present. Thank you, Mrs. Sarajaki. Prior to the start of this part of the meeting, we were in executive session, and at that time we discussed the personnel agenda, the HIB report, the legal status report, and the suspension and detention report. We have additions to the agenda added after Wednesday, February 19th. 1S, the out of district placement was removed and 4S, the 2020 creative summer workshop courses. The New Jersey open public meeting law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Scotch Plains Family Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted at the Board of Education offices located at 512 Cedar Street, Street Scotch Plains, New Jersey. Such notice was provided in written notice and forwarded to the Star Ledger, the Times, the Township Clerk of Scotch Plains, and the Borough Clerk of Famwood in the revised annual notice of regularly scheduled meetings adopted August 29th, 2019. At this time, we're gonna have our instructional update. The first one being upon transportation. It was a study done by Ingrid Ritano of the Pupil Transportation Solutions, LLC. At this time, I'm beginning the study. Yeah. Excuse me? She's, I'm sorry, she's just beginning the study. Yes. And at this time, I'd ask Ingrid to uh, come to the podium. And will you be using the overhead or are you just speaking tonight? I'm just speaking. Okay. Please, Thank Ingrid. You. Welcome. Good evening. My name is Ingrid Rotano, and I'm the owner of Pupil Transportation Solutions. I've been in this industry 45 years. And I've, I'm so pleased to be here because anybody that is that interested in making sure their kids are safe, I'm all for it. Um, I've already been in touch with your police department. They're so willing to work, so willing to help. It's amazing. And I really appreciate that. I want to let you know straight up. There are great people over there, too. I've um, already started. I've been here three days. Marisol and I have been working together, trying to gather map detailing so that I can get a better handle on where your walkers are coming from. Uh, at this point, we're knee deep in map detailing. I have bus routes that I'm going to be looking at. I've got stops that I'm going to be looking at to develop safety to make sure they're safe stops so that your children are always safe getting on a bus in the morning. Whether they ride a bus or they don't, they're gonna be looked at one way or another. Uh, to let you know, there's a criteria that I developed many years ago for riding a school bus, and I brought that here. I didn't want to reinvent the wheel here. I wanted to bring my wheel to you, and that's what I'm doing. Just so that you get a better idea of what I'm doing, I'm looking at section ro roadway to make sure that the roadways are safe, the speed limit. That's a big factor in all your bus stops, all your walkways, speed. I'm looking at traffic volume. Some roads, you can look at a map and you just know, you can tell by the size of the roadway that it's gonna be an issue. But we're gonna go out and physically look at them, along with the police department, because he knows more about the roadways than I could ever know. <clears throat> Visibility, that's another big factor. Whether they have a, a grade, a downgrade, trees in the road, there's no way to tell from a map. Somebody has to go out and take an actual look at these roads. That's what we're going to be doing. So that you know, police department is the only ones that could tell me how much your driver failure factors into play out there. Some roads, by looking at a map or me sitting there at nine o'clock, I couldn't tell that you have vehicles that speed down these roadways. It might look very quiet at nine o'clock, but at eight o'clock in the morning when people are on their way to work, 
could be a very big different issue. The police department are going to be factored into that beyond belief because he has that kind of knowledge. Major highway, you've already got Route 22. You already know, I think without even thinking about it, that that's a hazardous road. That's already in place. Route 22 doesn't enter into it, but it is a problem. Existing hard walkway. If there's a sidewalk to be had, that's great, but that doesn't always happen. Kids can walk in the grass, but sometimes there's no place for them to even walk there. Taking a ride out there and looking, that's what's going to tell me, and you, even, I'm sure you've never been 100% of this township. Some of you don't even know, uh, wouldn't even know where the roads were. You will when I'm done. Distance between walkway and, and the traffic. You've got three feet, hopefully, not always, but hopefully we're going to find that out too. Every time a student crosses a street, that's another factor in too. It's wonderful when they can walk all on the same side of the roadway. Very often it doesn't happen. They have to cross. And there's a big difference between a grade school child, second grade crossing, and a high school child. We're going to understand the difference there too. Curbing, other barriers. Hopefully there's curbing through the town. Some streets will have it, some streets won't. Length of the roadway. If it's a really long road, could factor into a different, different scenario. You're going to know that too. <laughs> walkway traffic directions. Students walking with traffic, with traffic coming to their back, can be dangerous. They don't see the car coming. Everything's going to factor in. When I'm done with my study and things are written out, you'll have a better idea of where your students are. I'm hoping that I can answer questions. If I can't, I'm always willing to tell you I can't. But I usually know where to get the answer. And I'm not afraid to say that I don't know. Hopefully, I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. That's what I can tell you. Population density factors into this traffic volume, velocity of vehicles, uh, bridges, walkways. Everything's going to factor in. High school opposed to grade school. Temporary conditions. You have buildings that are being put up. They break up the sidewalk. It can be a temporary situation that maybe they'll get a bus but people will know that going in. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Uh, the police department, as I said, has been in touch. We were together this morning, as a matter of fact. We spent a couple of hours together. We're going to work hard. We're going to make this work. I'm going to make your life, hopefully, easier, along with your superintendent, Mass. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Hi, how Thank are you? Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you in advance for all the hard work that you're doing. Um, I have a couple questions. One is, based on all your findings, I guess, are you going to give, the, give us as a district specific recommendations as yes. to how to proceed? Okay. Thank you. And then also, um, I don't know if you, along with Marisol, if you have access to like, and how many years going back, but, but feedback on the routes that are running now, like parent phone calls and logs to kind of assess you know what has worked and what has not worked is that something that you take into account I will okay thank you you're welcome does anybody have any other questions for Ingrid no, I'm just gonna say thank you yeah. you know where I am I'll be here a couple days a week uh, if you don't if I'm not here you have a question don't hesitate your superintendent has my phone number I'd be more than happy to leave a card you can ask me Anything you like, leave a message. If I don't, if I can't get to you right away, I'll call you back. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank I you. have one more question. Yeah. What What's the time frame? I guess for the completion of your your work. Or Hopefully by the end of May. I'm. That's what I'm Ooh. looking for. Thank you. Thank you, Ingrid. You're welcome. You know, in, in meeting you, the piece that gives me. The, the most joy is your systematic approach mm -hmm. to, to busing and the fact that your methodology has been proven to be successful in, in multiple districts. And, and the fact that you're a leader in the state and teaching at Rutgers University the transportation courses also gives us great confidence in, in working with you. And we also recognize that it's, it's professional development for all of us mm -hmm. to learn about yeah. transportation through a new lens. So thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you. you very much for having yeah. me. I, 
I enjoy this place. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I appreciate yeah. you coming out this evening to share the Anytime. beginning of the study with us. Anytime. And we look forward to seeing you again in May sometime. Maybe before that. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Safe home. Okay, next on the instructional updates, we have the 2020-2021 preliminary special ed budget presentation by Mrs. Saradaki and Mrs. Rabimbis. Will you be using the overhead? Yes. yes we okay, will. so um, we'll move to the audience and bring down the screen. <laughs> sure. That's great. Oh, that's very cute. Good evening, everyone. This evening, Mrs. Saradaki and I have the pleasure of presenting the special education budget for 2020, 2020, 2021. Just to give you some background information, um, through state and federal mandates, the district has an obligation to provide children with disabilities a free, appropriate public education in the least restrictive environment. The IEP teams come together, which is comprised of the parents, a general education teacher, a special education <coughs> teacher, and a case manager to develop, and, um, and their teachers overall, not just the ones at the meeting, to develop an IEP with the necessary components to meet the appropriate needs of the students so that their individual unique talents can be used to develop a program that helps them progress on their goals and objectives um, that, that really tackle the issues their disabilities present. Additionally, just some background information on special education. It's about educational programs and practices um, designed to meet the needs of our individual students and their unique needs. Sometimes it involves special teaching approaches, related services, modifications, but mostly a lot of care within the classroom with the student. Here you'll see our October 15th student data. This is what we report to the state every year. And you'll see that this year we had, on October 15th, we had 728 students that were classified as special education. 97 of those students were out of district at that time. And you can see their placements, the balance of those students uh, were hand, are handled, are able to remain in district and were able to provide the services that they need. Um, you'll see that we have some that are shared time. Uh, that is half day at our school and half day at, generally it's Union County VOTEC. Uh, we have 30 that are placed in public placements and 49 in private placements depending on their needs. And we don't have any at regular day schools this year. So our percentage this year of out of district students, I'm sorry, of total special ed students, sorry is um, about 15%. Those are students that do have IEPs in the district. If you, oh, thank you. <laughs> Here you'll see it schematically. Uh, you'll see in district, 88.2% of our students are able to stay in district. 2.2% of those student are, of students are in district half a day and then at a half day program outside of district. Uh, 3.6 are in public placement and 5.9 are in private placement. Here you'll see tuition and you'll see that this has increased dramatically 
uh, over the past few years uh, with no increase, no increase in the number of students. You'll see back in 2015-16, there were 93 students in uh, out-of-district placements. There are currently 97. So that, um, and, but you'll see an increase of over the six, five years of, I'm sorry, I didn't make that big enough. What's the percentage? Yeah. 30 some? 38, per, well, 38.7% this year alone we're looking at. So over the period of time, it's in the 30s. Um, with a 2% cap, that is challenging. So, um, and you'll see there how much we spend for the, uh, out of, you see LEA special that is um, public placements. Vocational special ed, that is our shared time students for the most part. Uh, private in state and we have private out of state students. And then we do have uh, special ed students in the state facility. The number, the first total is the total costs, and then we do get funds from the state, uh, from the federal government for the IDEA grant that is applied to tuition, and so the net number or expense is at the bottom. And you'll see that projected for next year, it's about 7.8 million. Oh, transportation. Transportation costs for special ed, you'll see that under Ed Services Commission, we had a almost $500,000 increase this year from 1.8 million, no, I'm sorry, 1.6 million to 2.1 million. Um, transportation has gotten very expensive for uh, all of the districts in the state. Uh, we have a national problem with a shortage of bus drivers. The CDL laws have changed, and uh, <coughs> bus drivers are now negotiating their price, their, what they're willing to work for. Um, Ed Services Commission has had a problem getting routes this year uh, because of the shortage, and the costs have increased dramatically for our special ed routes. Uh, we don't use the Ed Services Commission for our uh, gen ed students, so we haven't seen quite the same increase. Uh, we do have our own drivers for much of that. So you'll see what we pay are for the our in-district salaries when they drive special ed, and that's during the summer. Our outside contractors that we have bid in ourselves, you'll see the Ed Services Commission, which is uh, most of the out-of-district schools, and you'll see a management fee that we have to pay to Ed Services Commission for handling the transportation. Going back to a moment to the transportation and tuition slides, it's important to note that the district doesn't have control over those costs, and the, the out-of-district schools are not held to the 2% cap like we are. Mm -hmm. So those costs continue to increase, whereas our budgets continue to get tighter and tighter. Um, the, the one steady thing I will say is that we try to keep as many students um, who are appropriately to be placed in district in district with multiple supports. And we've been under 100 students out of district for the past five years, which is really great. Um, with that um, increased um, number of students staying in district, we've also had an increase of need of the students we've served, that we serve. So when you look at our, um, our current program in district, we have various classes throughout the district for the multiply disabled classrooms. So we have three preschool multiply disabled classes and we have um, elementary classes that run K to four, different grade levels in different buildings. We have a class at Evergreen, a class at Coles, a class at McGinn and two at Brenner. Thank you, I needed that little tidbit from Mrs. Panino. And then we have um, a class at Park, uh, two classes at Park, excuse me, a class at Terrell, and then we have two classes at the high school. 
And the, the wonderful piece about the students staying in district is that they have the opportunity to be mainstreamed during different times of the day with their general education peers um, and with the students that they live in the community with, which is, which is a, a nice piece for us as a district. Other programs and services that we have for our students based on their IEPs are pull-out replacement classes, in-class resource classes where we have a general education teacher working with a special education teacher in the same classroom where there are general education students and special education students working together on the general ed curriculum. We provide speech language, th language therapy for those students that require that, occupational therapy, physical therapy, counseling ser services, supplemental aids and supports, and of course transportation as was mentioned. In transportation, um, there are criteria for students with special needs. Um, all of our out-of-district students, obviously, um, we are required to provide transportation, and there's other criteria that we use for our in-district students regarding transportation as well that's IEP-driven. When you look at special education costs, it encompasses a number of items. So when Debbie um, went over, and we'll go over further costs, we have the costs of our child study team members, which are our district social workers that are assigned as case managers, our school psychologists, and our learning disabilities teachers consultants. We have our special education teachers, preschool through grade 12. We have instructional aides, group aides, for, that serve a variety of students within um, usually general education settings, sometimes in the resource room, depending on the student's needs and class sizes, and then individual aides, basically students who have a one-to-one -one aid during the school day. As I mentioned before, um, we do have services of OT, PT, speech, and um, BCBA service that's services, that's behavioral supports. Those are included in our special education costs. We also provide home instruction for those children who are homebound due to um, a medical need. So we provide that, those students who are hospitalized in intensive outpatient programs or that are home and cannot attend school, we, those costs are, are included in the special education budget. And we have an extended school year program for our students with IEPs, those students who will not recoup the gains that they've made the previous school year were required to provide an extended school year program and there's criteria that we use to, um, to look at each individual student to determine whether they are eligible for ESY and we provide that program, um, those services within the school, uh, within our schools during the summer. One of the other important pieces um, that we're seeing in our, in our district um, are the increased needs for social, emotional, and mental health support. So beyond all of the general interventions that are provided by our student assistant specialists, our guidance counselors, um, our child study team members through our school psychologists and our social workers, we also um, provide effective school solutions in two of our schools. And um, right now we're offering it in one middle school and it, at the high school where they provide comprehensive wraparound services for identified students. And it's a real high tier um, individualized program for those students. So it provides individual counseling in school, group counseling daily. Um, they tackle issues of school avoidance, behavioral supports, family supports, and professional development to our staff. A really wonderful, wonderful component of the ESS program is the connection between the clinician, the ESS clinician, the, the teachers of our district and the staff of our district and the families. It's a, it's a nice cohesive relationship that we have for our students um, through these programs. And we, we've seen um, really wonderful support for the children and gains in um, providing those supports in school to keep them in our district and with their, uh, their peers from their community. So to review some of the costs about the, what Lisa has been talking about, you'll see here our costs for multiply disabled K through 12 and our costs for multiply disabled for the pre-K. Um, these expenditures, these line items are a combination of salaries for teachers, salaries for aides, classroom supplies, professional development, um, whatever the classroom needs. If they happen to need some professional services to assist in the classroom, um, software, whatever is required. And you can see at the bottom of this slide how many students have been served in each of the years above. Uh, so you'll see this year we have 19 preschoolers, 
uh, 20 elementary, 10 middle school, and 17 high school students that are served in these classes. Mm -hmm. I just want to highlight one um, component. If you look at, I'm gonna go backwards for a second. If you look at the 1920 numbers at the high school, you'll notice in 1819 there were 15 students. In 1920 there were 17. What we were experiencing as a district, we're keeping our students in district and serving them in district. And when they have completed their academic requirements but require transition services, those students are moving into out of district programs, which increases our out of district numbers. But our high school numbers are staying um, pretty, pretty linear for the last two years because the number of students who are, age, or who are moving into transition are equaling more or less the number of students who are moving up from eighth grade to ninth grade. So you'll see that stability, um, but, the, but the reality is the number of students that we're serving, they're staying in district longer, which is, which is a wonderful piece for our programming. The additional support, the other special education programs, you'll see at the top, resource program costs. Uh, the next line is related services. This is quite a large amount of money because it includes a lot of services for the students. It includes their occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech, ABA services, um, it also, effective school solutions. It also includes if they need one-on-one -on -one nursing services, um, if they need nervous, some of the students will actually require nurses on their transportation route. Um, the next line is one-to-one uh, -one aids. Then, and you'll see it kind of goes up and down. We had a reclassification of aids, so some of the costs in 2019-20 and 2021 actually are in the MD program now. Uh, child study teams, the cost of uh, our child study teams and home instruction. And you'll see at the bottom, again, a portion of the IDEA grant that is used toward these services um, to come down to a net district expense. Now these lines also, uh, every one of these lines will include salaries other than the home instruction, which only includes salaries for either our employees or for contracted services. Every other line includes supplies, uh, potentially aids, professional development. These are not just the salary costs. <clears throat> and then we have the summary of the costs. And you'll see that between this year and next year, we're expecting almost a 10% increase in costs. And the five-year change has been close to 40%. Um, it's all closely monitored. Um, it's not expense that we can do without, but it does exceed the 2% cap. Here you'll see it graphically. You'll see tuition, what we spend on tuition in green. You'll see what we spend on transportation in red. Self-contained classes are in orange. And that additional support, which includes all the extra services for students, the child study teams, the, um, what else was in that? Purchases required for students. Um, that's all in the 50%. And that's mostly cost to keep students in district. The blue, the blue is the other cost that includes the resource rooms, the one-to-one -one aids. Um, materials, uh, the occupational therapy, physical therapy, all of those costs. Mm -hmm. I saw so Debbie mentioned the, the change over the past five years. So I wanted to highlight some of the, um, some of the items that our budget, our district's budget has supported over time, over that same time period. We've served an increased number of special education students, and we've seen an increased need in, um, an increase in their individual needs. So 
we've added social emotional supports, mental health supports, and behavioral supports. That's been a, a big line item over time, especially for our younger children, providing those ABA services and the uh, BCBA services. We've added increased language, um, speech and language um, specialists to our district, and we've added special education teachers, additional special education teachers over time to support the, the in-district programs. Finally, for next year, what we're, we're proposing is an additional child study team member to, in, to address the increased caseload at the high school. Currently, our high school child study team members are servicing each between nine, nine, 95 and 100 students each. And when you consider the amount of reevaluations that they need to do, the um, IEP meetings that are held that are required by law, not to mention the IEP meetings that are needed in order to address specific needs of students and the intensity of needs, it, it's become very difficult for the high school team to, um, to ensure the level of, of support that we really want to, to provide our families and our children. So we're requesting an additional child study team member for that. And one of the things that we've discussed as an administrative team, as we're looking at the ebb and flow of numbers, one of the things that happened with the high school is the, the, the what we call the bubble that happened at the younger grades has hit the high school right now. So when you look at the increased programming that we're providing, the level of students that we're keeping in district and providing quality program for, there's a need to provide those supports to the students, the teachers, and the families. So the additional team member right now would be slotted for the high school, but if um, enrollment shift, special ed needs shift, that, that position could be moved to other areas of need if warranted over time. Um, overall, our, our special education department is, is an incredible group of professionals that, um, that, that wouldn't, um, we wouldn't have the success we have without them. So Mrs. Panino and Mrs. Tomesco are here, our special education supervisors. Our child study team members do yeoman's work in working with the children, the teachers, and the families. Um, our general education teachers and our administrators really understand the needs that our special education students have and are supportive of our programming and helping us in, in every single way that um, really meet those unique needs that our children possess. And, and overall, um, we, we really strive to meet not just the mandates, but the quality that our district um, expects of our programming. And um, the group of professionals that really support our children are, are dedicated to each and every one of them. So uh, from, from being, um, from me, the director, I, I'm very pleased and always honored to serve our, our district community because there's a group of professionals that just loves children and it's, it's really an honor. Um, we, we open it up now to any questions that you may have. And I guess we can put the lights on and Thank you, Mrs. Saradaki. Thank you, Mrs. Rebembas. Does anybody have any questions? I don't have a question, but a comment. Go right ahead. Um, thank you for the very detailed presentation. Um, I know a lot of districts experience the stress of rising costs for special education, but um, and it's so important that every child has an individualized program, but I, I wasn't aware of the statistics as to how few kids are out of district. Um, and I'm, I'm just really proud of the robustness of, of our programming within district. So I was glad to, to hear that target and, and thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. It just, again, it speaks to our, our programming that we're able to offer in our schools. Yeah, 88% of our students are in district, which is an amazing number, which is great for us. Well, I thank you for the fine details and showing, you know, even though there are only a few students that are out of district, how expensive it is and all the services that they need. 
and it is mandated that we provide these services. And it's so unfortunate for these families that have children that have these disabilities and these special needs that they need to have them, but luckily we're able to provide them, but it does put a strain on our budget. Just out of curiosity, how many are homeschooled that are hospitalized, I think you mentioned? That number ebbs and flows, it goes up and down okay. um, because most of our hospitalizations are short term. Um, generally, a, a real hospitalization would be, could be as short as overnight, which they wouldn't request home instruction for, but could last 10 to 15 days depending on the program. And they might go to an IOP program, okay. an intensive outpatient where we serve, we provide the home instruction for them. So in a typical, let's say in a typical time frame right now, we'll probably have 10 students district-wide who are in some type of program that requires home instruction. Okay. Or for example, perhaps a medical emergency, concussion, um, broken leg, even simple things like that where we would provide home instruction for those students as well. Oh, just curious, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, on the date of October 15th, when most of those numbers are from, it was eight students. Okay. Very close to yeah. what Lisa provided. I know I'm not calculating correctly, <laughs> but thank you so much for that. It was super helpful. And um, the, the number for when, when you look at the self contained class in district and the number of students, do we use that number plus the out of district, I'm not seeing how we get to your, the total count. So if, when, when I'm looking at the, the two charts, so the self-contained classes in district, it looks like our numbers went down actually, not up in enrollment. So I'm just trying to figure out how we got to the, the total number. Which slides are you on? Oh, then I can... sorry. Um, the October 15th student data. Mm -hmm. She's looking at the top of page six. Mm -hmm. So. The out of district one. placement on that one says 97. And then on the, that matches the 97 here. So then on the next page where it says, um, I'm just, uh, the self contained classes in district. That's not all inclusive of the total number of special ed. They're two totally different programs. Okay. So on page four, where the October 15th counts are for 97 students, those are students who are out of district and are, are in private schools for, for students with disabilities or public schools for students with disabilities. They are not in district. Right. The self-contained numbers that are on other pages, those are children who are in our current programs, in our MD classes. Those are the, those numbers. So when you look at that enrollment with um, where it has the each level pre-K, elementary, middle school, and high school, and then it has the 16, 17, and it progresses each year until mm -hmm. 19, 20. Those numbers are not out of district numbers. Those are our self-contained students in, in our multiply disabled classes. Okay, I got it. Told you I was looking at it, honey. <laughs> it's, um, it's a lot of vocabulary learning. So when you get used to the vocabulary, it, it helps a little bit. So it's a, it, Thank it's, you. it's a, <laughs> we'll give you a, a little chart next time. We'll add that to the presentation because it's complicated. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I just, uh, so the governor's doing his budget uh, next week. I don't think we're expecting any big increases for special ed or it would be nominal like it was I think last time. Last year we received about 400000 more and we're hoping we receive that money this year. The same, you mean? At least the same. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Bell. Thank you, Mrs. Saradaki. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Rebecca's. Okay, uh, our next instructional update will be on February 27th. We will have the 2020-2021 preliminary budget and enrollment curriculum staffing and capital budgets presented by Mrs. Saradaki and Dr. Mast. At this time, we'll open the meeting up for public comment in accordance with the Scotch Plains Fanwood Public Schools Bylaw 0164-0165. The meeting will be open for 15 minutes for public comments. Maximum of three minutes per speaker. Speakers addressing the superintendent items business functions and other board business will be heard first. 
and if time remains, speakers may address other matters. Please note, board members cannot respond directly to regarding concerns of individual students or staff members. Such matters should be addressed with the superintendent's office. When you come to the podium, please state your name and mention the town in which you reside. Kevin McSherry, Scotch Plains. Uh, I know we have a meeting tomorrow night, uh, the first meeting of the task force. I gather at 5 o'clock on Friday. I'll come back to that in a second. But uh, I was looking at the agenda uh, <coughs> earlier today, and I saw that uh, you were already in the process of going out for a professional services agreement uh, for Potter Architecture for the high school lights. So my concern is this. Uh, it, my concern first was at the 5 o'clock, because when you schedule a meeting on 5 o'clock Friday, it kind of lets me know that you have an internal deadline you're going to meet. Period. And then when I see that you're already going out for a professional services agreement for architectural support, that means to me it's already been predetermined you're putting your you're either spending money or you're putting yourself in position to spend the money to support the lighting of the high school fields. So when I look at that Friday meeting, are we on a predetermined path already, regardless of what happens in the Friday meeting? Or are we just starting the process of evaluating what the impact is to the neighborhoods around the field? And I know I'm not supposed to ask questions, but when I see the two put together, I get a little bit concerned that, you know, in my term, we're just checking the boxes to get to the application to get into the town council. I, th I think that we're on a highly likely path that we're moving forward with the lights. And, and the purpose of the, the meeting tomorrow night is to address the concerns and um, to, to minimize the impact on the neighbors should we be successful in moving forward with the lights. Okay, um, with the studies that you're doing, professional services agreement, all of those studies, does any of that include the impact on the, uh, the streets? Because as we've related, related before, and I don't want to rehash uh, the comments made in the previous couple of weeks because we have tomorrow night also, but the impact to the neighborhood surrounding with uh, the traffic, the parking? Yes. We lose our evenings now. Uh, the only defense that we had previously was that the sun went down and obviously the events would end and people would leave the neighborhood. And we would have quote, our quiet time, unquote. So um, all the things that you're arranging for or going to investigate, and I know that you're coming out and reaching out to the community, but are you going to take that or investigate what the impact is now and how you're going to now extend that into the evening hours? Yes, we are. Okay. So I'm sure we'll be able to talk more tomorrow, but I just wanted to make sure where we stood on because I it looked like you were already working towards a predetermined path, and I just wanted to... You're not wrong about that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mrs. Sharon. Madam President, if I may, just yes. uh, for the public and for the board, just to confirm that the board is not uh, beholden to or required to move forward with any project until after bids are awarded by this board. So there's quite a few steps between, um, and to Dr. Mast's comment about, you know, the, the, the board certainly and the administration certainly has a path that they'd like to go down, but nothing is final until this board takes formal action to that effect. And the approval, uh, if, if the board later tonight approves the, uh, the go-ahead for the Potter Architects to move forward, that is still just the initial planning phases of the project. Um, there are a number of districts that go through that and then later decide not to move forward depending on estimated costs. There's a number of things that still have to be done even before bids are put together. Uh, and again, until those bids are actually awarded by the board, um, as for example, the culinary arts program that's on tonight's agenda, um, uh, until that actually happens, the, the project is not final. Thank you. <clears throat> is there anybody else that wishes to address the board at this time? There will be another opportunity later. Okay, seeing no one, then we'll close this portion of the meeting and move on to the committee reports. Does anybody have a committee report this evening? I have two. Uh, Ms. Brody, go right ahead. Okay. So, uh, Finance Committee met February 13th. Um, we discussed having in Ingrid Vitano come and talk about her process for uh, the bus evaluating our transportation. We also discussed the fact that uh, we had th uh, three of the lowest bids and the lowest bid that would be on the agenda this evening. Regarding the also regarding the culinary arts room, um, appliances will be purchased separately, and the bids are being reviewed by the architect and attorney. And I assume since they're on the, the agenda that we're going to be voting, um, 
we d discussed again about the turf field lighting and the proposal from Potter Architects. And we discussed also everything that's been discussed already, the, the meeting that we're having tomorrow night. So that, that was our finance committee meeting. Um, if I can move on to community relations as well. Uh, we discussed, we, last night we went to the president's meeting, the PTA council president's meeting, which was, which was quite lovely, and we discussed the topics that we wanted to discuss last night. Uh, we had further discussions over our short-term goals. Um, we discussed how we as a board get notified of things happening in the district so that have the board, because some of us do not have students in the school, to have us put on SWIFT K-12. So like, so then I know different things that's going on because you know, I don't have anybody here any longer. Um, <laughs> we also discussed, 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 excuse me, what types of information we need to be notified of bef before it comes out from central office. And um, also when we go to events outside of being parents that uh, that somebody knows that we're there you know so if I go to a concert maybe somebody would say that acknowledge that I'm there just so the public knows that we're going to other things we're not just going to the board meetings we're not just going to our community meetings we're really trying to be involved with the community as much as possible and not even just our own schools when you have children in school so that's what we discussed last night we had a really great meeting with the PTA presidents, and we're going to partner with them on um, tagging onto their newsletters to give some of our Board of Ed news out to parents with that vehicle. So we're going to work on a plan for that. Um, I also asked them for feedback on the website, so they're collating all their feedback together and then to give it to me so I can uh, talk to Amelia about it and Dr. Mass. We also discussed maybe having board members attend some school PTA meetings as another way to reach out to the, to the parents. We discussed strategic planning and the upcoming and, and um, letting them know as soon as possible when those dates will be. Uh, what else did we talk about? That was, that's, is, oh, also they are putting me on their PTA emails so then I can let everybody know if there's an event that's going on within the PTA, because we only know about the events on the district calendar. We don't know about, like if somebody's going to Terrell, they don't know what the park events are, and, and all, the PTAs do all kinds of really great events that we might not know of. This way I can add them to our event calendar for board members to sign up for. So that was the, the highlights of the meeting, and we're gonna do this on a regular basis with the PTA presidents. It was. It's a wonderful collaboration, and I thank Regina for allowing us to go, and all the presidents that were there for welcoming us. Right. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brody. Does anybody else have a report to give? I have two reports as well. Ms. Soriani, go right ahead. Okay. Uh, the curriculum committee met on February 10th. Okay. We had one agenda item, but it was um, a robust agenda <coughs> item. Um, Liz McKenna. Um, the supervisor of English and Noel Baxter, the supervisor of social studies and media library came to discuss literature as windows and mirrors in our schools, um, which means helping students see themselves through the texts that they read and also helping them to see and understand others through those texts. So um, they gave a very interesting presentation. They talked about how reading increases empathy towards people's experiences. Um, how students, how important it is for students to see themselves in the books that they read, helps them feel valued. They gave a little background research. Um, one study showed that, I thought this was very interesting, a study in 2018 showed that 27% of children's books featured animals as protagonists, but only 10% of books had African American protagonists. Mm. Um, so th they presented that statistic and talked about how books are not as readily available that have minority characters, um, which are very important to provide for our students. And um, fortunately for us, um, they, the district does its due diligence in finding those texts. They actually brought, went to every school in the district and brought us an entire table full of texts um, that our children um, have, have choices to read. <coughs> Um, that have minority characters in the books. 
Um, they're very carefully selected. Um, and some of them are selected to point out specifically people with differences. And some of them are just fun stories where difference just happens to occur. And it's in the background and not central to the plot. So they're also very careful to make those distinctions um, for our students. Um, so they talked about the importance of being exposed to cultures that are unlike our own um, and the value in social studies from a cultural perspective and then how they also use these texts um, not just from a cultural perspective but in language arts classes for instructional purposes and just learning things like setting and you know various um, instructional points. Um, they talked about the differences in books ranging from the elementary level starting at picture books. They showed us this wonderful picture book um, about a child um, with special needs as a superhero and all of his special powers. So it's really not just racial diversity as well, but um, students with mental, uh, people with mental health needs and teaching our students just about difference on all levels. So they showed us picture books and then talked about um, all the way up to the high school level with books in verse. And um, they also told us ways that students interact with the texts. There are three different ways that the students interact with the text from whole class instruction, where it's more um, at the elementary level, the whole class is reading the book, um, to where the students are engaged in book clubs or literature circles, where students have choice and they discuss various texts in small groups. Um, the book clubs are thematic, focus on such issues like identity, and then they talked about how students also have choice and can select various <coughs> books for independent reading, and from either from the media center or their classroom libraries. Some other interesting points that the supervisors pointed out were that some school districts maybe will just have one unit focusing on diversity, but um, in our district, diversity is integrated throughout all the texts, throughout every thematic lesson throughout the year, which is really, really special. Um, again, I, I mentioned that diversity is not just focused on racial issues, but issues of mental health, LGBTQ issues, experiences of, of other cultures throughout history, such as Jews in the Holocaust, or there was a text about um, the Japanese exper experience in internment camp um, during World War II as well. Um, they talked about how they continue to get feedback about the texts from, from teachers, how students respond so that they can make changes to the curriculum um, from year to year about which texts are more popular and which um, texts are landing for the kids. And um, then they also gave us just a great example about students from the Black Student Union at the high school coming to read a book at McGinn that really focused on ideas um, about beauty related to skin color. So just how they're, it, that's another way that, that students are interacting with the text by sharing it with, with um, younger, older students sharing with younger students. And so it was a really great and enlightening presentation and we meet again on March 10th. Any questions and I'll move on to truth and ra racial healing and transformation. That was a great report, Mrs. Soriana. Yes, go right ahead with your second sure. report. Doesn't that fall later? Yeah, that, that falls a little later. But later? Yeah. Okay. okay. Gotcha. Any other regular committee reports? I know that for negotiations, we did meet on uh, February 3rd with the administrators and supervisors, and we will be meeting again on the 24th of February. Any other reports? Okay, if there are no further committee reports, we'll move on to letters from the board. Uh, one LET email dated from February 12th, 2020 from Mrs. Regina Gannon, thanking the Board of Ed for their sympathy card. That brings us to the superintendent's report, Dr. Mance. Okay, so for 2S, I would move that the board affirms the superintendent's decisions in the four HID cases reported in executive <laughs> session on January 30th. So move, second. Any question or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. For 3S, I would ask the board to approve the following field trips. There's a high school Spanish trip to Little Spain in New York. There's a high school math trip to the National 
Museum of Mathematics where they're focused on probability. Um, Trey Shore from Terrell Middle School is bringing his ensemble to visit Quibbletown Middle School in Piscataway so they can perform and rehearse and support each other in making music. And um, Megan Fernandez is bringing her choir to the Majestic Theater in New York City. So moved. Second. Any question or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. And believe it or not, it's time to approve the Creative Summer Workshop course. I would ask that the board move to uh, approve our offerings for this year. So moved. Second. Second. Any question or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Moving on to personnel. Uh, I would move, I would ask the board to approve the personnel report from this evening that we discussed in exec. So moved. Second. Any question or discussion? Mrs. Saradaki, will you please call the roll? Oh. Debbie? Uh, yeah. And Amy? Uh, Mrs. Winkler? Yes. Mrs. Brody? Yes. Mrs. Bauer? Yes. Mrs. Boroff? Yes. Mrs. Mitchell? Yes. Mrs. Suriani? Yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Dr. Kulikowski? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Dr. Mast. Thank you, Mrs. Saradaki. And that brings us to the business functions, Mrs. Saradaki. Yes, I'd like to group them. Yes, please do. Um, one BUS, I'm asking that the Board of Education approve the superintendent's recommendation for staff training reimbursements on the report dated February 20th. Two BUS, I'm asking the board to approve um, contracted service for services for child study team. Um, and that is for very students, it's child study team member, and it's Thomas Gavor at $85 an hour. Uh, total expected amount somewhere in the neighborhood of 36000 And that's for the balance of the school year. Uh, three BUS, Potter Architects Professional Services for the high school field lighting. Um, there is one change I need to make in this. No, that's correct. I'm sorry. Uh, Potter's Architects <coughs> Professional Services project proposal is an amount of 135255 this includes engineering services as well as architectural services. The only thing that we'll have separate from this are the geological studies, uh, borings that have to be done at each light post to make sure the ground is suitable for supporting the light posts. And that should be about $10,000. Um, so this would be his fee for handling the project from start to finish, including br bringing the electric in and everything. Um, and those are the three items. Thank and you. funds for this project will be coming from Capital Reserve. Can I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Brody. A second? A second. Mrs. Winkler, thank you. Any question or discussion on those business items? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. I'll continue with the other items. Uh, the next meeting, I'll be asking for the board to win, award to the lowest bidder. Uh, currently, it's Triform Construction Incorporated. Uh, our attorney has reviewed the, the lowest three bidders um, and agrees that Triform is in compliance. We're just waiting for our architect's review of his references. Um, so I'll be asking for the approval on that project. You'll see that we had a range of bid results from 884,200 to 1,459,999. <laughs> uh, so, 5BUS, uh, I'll be asking for the board to approve participation in Ed Data Services uh, for a fee of $13,604. It's a 2% increase over 2019 20. 
six BUS, I'll be asking for the board to approve the contract renewal with Effective School Solutions uh, for the services at the high school and at Terrell Middle School of uh, 410,900. Uh, that's a continuation of the same services that we have this year. Uh, there's no change in the number of personnel. I believe it's two people at the high school and one person at Terrell Middle School. Um, I'll be asking for the board to acknowledge receipt of the district's fire and security drill reports for the month of January 2020. And ABOS, I'll be asking for the board to acknowledge receipt of the board secretary reports, the treasurer of school fund reports, and the budget adjustments for the month of January. 9 BUS, I'll be asking for the board to acknowledge receipt of the disbursement listings for the month of January. 10 BUS, I'll be asking for the board to approve the bills for the period January 28th through February 21st. And 11 BUS, I'll be asking the board to approve vendors for the rep theater, um, and these are the musicians. They usually are approved at a later date because they don't know exactly who the musicians will be when the play first initially gets underway. And that's it. Thank you, Mrs. Sarah Dacky. Does anybody have any questions? Mrs. Winkler? I do. For 6 BUS, uh, the Effective School Solutions? Yes. Um, how does this uh, cost compare with this year's, what we're paying for this school it's year? It's a 2% increase. 2% increase. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Moving on to board policies. Do we have any board policies update? Stay tuned. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Any new board business? Other board business? Liaison reports? Mrs. Yes. Soriano. Okay, so this is where, okay. Um, I'm the board liaison to Truth, Racial Healing, and Transformation. Um, there was a meeting last week. Um, again, the group is still in the planning phases, um, kind of talking about what our short and long-term goals are. A couple things that were discussed was how um, a couple members of Social Justice Matters met with um, a, the, was it the summit police chief, just to talk about community policing, um, ways that, that the police um, are perceived by the public, and maybe bringing um, that summit police chief in to talk to our police departments and what that might look like. So that's still in development. Um, Dr. Mast gave some information about um, Lieutenants Upon the Earth, a play that is going to be taking place for a small group in May um, that, is, that also speaks to that topic about police in the community and their relationships with the public. Um, Dr. Mast also gave information about um, activities of the Black mm -hmm. Student Union and No Place for Hate, um, and specifically giving students voice through art, um, that our arts integration specialist is um, working with students to tell their stories through art and amplifying youth voice, and there's gonna be a gallery night planned. <coughs> and then also we discussed um, a program that's happening in ninth grade social studies classes, Through My Eyes, which is um, a student facilitated program, um, again, amplifying youth voices about, about their experiences. Just, just to add a little bit to yes. that, through the Through My Eyes program is actually happening this year in grades 9 through 12. Okay. Um, I happened to have seen a ninth grade class that I had reported okay. out that day. So there is some exciting programming happening just to start some discussions um, about, about race and um, in all of our schools and stay tuned for more information about um, the committee. Thank you, Mrs. Soriano. Yes. Anybody have any questions? Are there any other liaison reports? Any requests to attend workshops? I have a liaison report. Oh, go right ahead, Mrs. Uh, I attended, and so did uh, Karen, the um, Union County School Board's uh, 
meeting that was uh, held on February 12th. A um, couple of bits of information that came out of there. Uh, the National School Boards Association had its annual uh, workshop uh, at the beginning of the month uh, where they discussed uh, equity in the classroom, equity with staff, um, and advocacy with legislators. There were a handful of people who were in attendance at the Union County School Board's meeting who uh, gave little mini synopses of some of the discussions that they had uh, when they attended the National School Board's Association uh, workshop. Um, we also got a bit of an update from the Board of Directors uh, that the, uh, you've probably all seen the emails that talk about the Future Ready Schools. This program has now been redubbed the Digital Ready Schools. Um, what else? And the New Jersey School Boards Association's online university should be up and running this week. Um, I know I, I looked at it. I was curious because I, I am due for uh, governance training. So, um, so I did see it's there. Um, what else? And then we had two presentations. Uh, one was about the pitfalls of board and staff use of social media, uh, which was interesting. Uh, it mostly uh, was a lot of examples of really poor choices that were made by different school people um, on social media that became uh, legal legal uh, cases and um, lots of don't do this. Um, and then there was another presentation was um, we're holding a board hearing, now what? And it was just information for boards about uh, what to expect at hearings and what to do and what not to do at hearings. So that was interesting as well. Um, and I can get those handouts scanned and out to you if you want them. Um, also, I'll, I'll just announce a few of the things that they, they told us about. Um, school Board Association is having a, a school finance conference on Friday, February 28th. Uh, so if anyone is uh, interested in that, you can go to their website and sign up for that. Um, they're also having the annual school technology conference on March 13th. And you can go to their website and sign up to attend that. And they're having a school communications forum on April 3rd. And you can go to their website and sign up to attend that. So that is my, my report. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Anyone else with a report? Any requests to attend workshop? I have one, too. Mrs. Wall. So uh, following off of Amy Winkler, um, uh, and I think that uh, Deb wants to join me. Um, there's the New Jersey School Board Association Communications Forum on August 3rd, uh, April 3rd, um, and it addresses public speaking for board members, board's role, community engagement, social media practices. Um, and so I think it would be beneficial to attend. And I would. Do you know like, if there's a charge for that? There is, there is a charge. It's uh, $99 per person. Um, it's an all day, it looks like, from uh, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And I can send you the um, summary, but it's a lot of useful information. And that's for you and me. Thank you. Thank you. Because you have to sign us up, Deb, right? Yeah, the board okay. has to vote on it, too. Okay. I'll send everybody the description of it, or I'll let you do it. Do you want to make a? I move we approve them attending and we're Second. gathering this great information. Second, and I would love to see what you bring back. That's her second. Okay, so thank you, Mrs. Bell, for making the motion. Mrs. Soriani for the second. Any other question or discussion about the the? Uh, two members attending the New Jersey School Board's Communications Forum. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Have fun. Let us know. What Thank goes you, everybody. On. Mm -hmm. yeah.
Um, any workshop reports? No reports. Then uh, at our next meeting, we will have the resolution for Youth Art Month in March. Next approval of the minutes will be at our next meeting for January 2nd for the reorg meeting. January 23rd's open agenda and executive session meeting. January 30th, the regular public meeting and executive session meeting. <coughs> So at this time, in accordance with the Scotch Plains Fanwood Public Schools Bylaw 0164, the meeting will be open for 15 minutes for public comments. Maximum of three minutes per speaker. Speakers addressing superintendent items, business functions, and other board business will be heard first. If time remains, speakers may address other matters. Please note, board members cannot respond regarding concerns with individual students or staff members. Such matters should be addressed with the superintendent's office. When you approach the podium, please state your name and the town in which you reside. Seeing no one, we'll close this portion of the meeting and move on for the remarks of the good of the order. I'm gonna jump in. Go right so, ahead, um, Mrs. Borough. And, and Stephanie, thank you, because you reminded me of this um, when you mentioned the students that were reading at the elementary school. And I just um, it had the, the privilege of going and visiting the high school when um, No Place for Hate um, uh, students were actually the upper grades um, doing hands-on projects with the ninth graders, which made me really realize um, the past week or so, I feel like we've had so many opportunities and given the students so many um, opportunities to work with different age groups. And uh, we had Junior Achievement High School Heroes, um, the middle school eighth graders were presenting to fifth graders. Um, the project Stephanie and I just think that it is um, it's one of the things that we talk about sometimes um, I know after the conference we heard so much about that um, that that educational uh, how wonderful it is to have that and so I just it's really nice to see it taking place and I think that we're doing great things in that direction so um, if you haven't learned about any of those things and you want to know definitely ask about them because they're really cool thank you mrs. Bora well, speaking about Youth Art Month, we have some lovely art mm -hmm. hanging up. And again, new and more creative pieces every time we come in here. I can't keep up with it all. Beautiful. It, and it looks like some of it reflects arts integration, too. Yeah. We, we have Art Month every month, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just stressful. wanted to mention, I know um, some of us were at Career Day at Park Middle School. And uh, it's always nice to uh, have a chance to share things. I was trying to encourage them to become teachers, which was challenging because you had the police and people there with a lot, a lot of things that seemed maybe more exciting, but <laughs> I did my best uh, because we need great teachers. If, if I could just tag on to that, I was at Terrell Middle School and for some reason, Dr. Holloway insisted on bringing me into the cafeteria. And while I was in the cafeteria, I got to meet six students who are in eighth grade, and they are actually working with fifth graders or sixth graders in math or language arts, and they've had this tutoring or supportive relationship. And in my conversations with them, I would ask them, is this inspiring you to teach? Are you getting the bug? And in some cases, I think two, it was a clear yes, and there was maybes also embedded in there, so. It's great news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was also at the career explorations at Park with Mrs. Bauer, and it was very exciting to be there again. I've done this for several years, and I don't know if you had a partner in your room. Did you have yeah. another professional? Well, mine didn't show up, so I had the whole time to myself. <laughs> And it, it's so um, nice to see the students open up after first feeling a little, you know, shy. And its teacher was in the room to, to prompt them to ask questions. But once we got going, then the, the time to change places, they didn't want to go. So we really had a good time. And I really appreciate the opportunity to work with the uh, eighth grade students over at Park every year for the career explorations. It's, it's an amazing uh, opportunity. I'm glad you were there too, Nance. I saw you briefly in the beginning. I was with the mayor of Fanwood, and then so oh. we're, our, our uh, push was for public service. Very good. So. I did want to also mention that we had a good turnout for the PTA coffee since our last mm -hmm. meeting. Yes. And a lot, a lot of good questions that parents uh, 
came out to ask. So thank you to the PTA for hosting that. There's one coming up, another one, right? Yes. The 18th, March 18th. March 18th. That, that's um, with the superintendent, not with the board members. Mm -hmm. well, well, not that board members yeah, don't go, but it's like it's still go. And if I could just say, I wanted to go back to, you gave me a segue, but then I didn't take it. For eighth graders and, and uh, um, civic service, um, I know last meeting I couldn't, I couldn't attend, but I think Dr. Mast gave a brief update on the initiative that we're doing with eighth graders in the district having an opportunity to come to a board meeting and individuals shadow each board member. This is something that... Um, a district in the northern part of the state did and then presented about at a uh, school board's workshop and and it was really exciting so we're kind of taking their lead and and bringing it here and just wanted to give a little update because I saw Mr. Jirachi who's kind of taking a lead and he developed helped to flush out the the application and he's going to be um, I think Dr. Mast is going to be um, reading the blind applications and making selections but he's been really instrumental in helping with this process and he told me that we have a really happy problem we have a lot of applications so it's really exciting to know that that our eighth grade students are um, excited about the opportunity of um, you know learning more about what we do coming to meetings and I think it's going to be a really fun process and um, in line with the social studies and civics curriculum so Authentic experiences, yeah. yeah. And um, this, this that's going to be in May. They'll be at a, right. at one of our board meetings in May. Yeah, yeah. That's that's again. It's keep keep tuned in for that one. Yes. Yeah. But the 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 taste of the town is coming up on March fifth, and I know several board members have already uh, bought their tickets to go on March fifth, and this will benefit the teachers with grants and you know, help the educational process in Scotch Plains. So we're looking forward to having a delicious time while raising funds for the students. And also Chicago, I saw the billboard up in front of the high school today when I rode by for all the performances listed coming up in March. I can't wait for that either. Every year that's another uh, great event we look forward to. Get your tickets early, they sell oh, out. They do sell out, yes, I put my request in already. And now uh, one more thing. Uh, it was uh, February 9th that our illustrious superintendent performed at the Shiloh Baptist Church in the Rise Up Chorus. And uh, myself and Amy were in attendance in the audience, along with Mr. Jirachi. Mm -hmm. And I think Patrice, Robin. Robin, Robin was there. And I thought I saw somebody else in the audience, but it was a lovely event. And it was an honor to see Dr. Mass perform, and it was just a great event. And I look forward to seeing you at future events. Thank you very much. It was nice to have your support. Oh, thank you. So, if there are any other remarks, then can I please have a motion for adjournment? <laughs> Madam President. Um, uh, oh yes, adjournment to go into exec. We do have some additional um, <laughs> business to attend to. We will not be coming back into public. So um, when we go into um, our exec meeting, we will not be coming at, back out. Except to adjourn the meeting. No, no further action is oh, anticipated. Yeah, no, no action will be taken. So can I have that motion? So moved. moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Found the Thank you, Mike. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. See you next time. Everybody move. <laughs>